look at this first slide. We've got our create table statement and we're partitioning here. This is going to be what's called a PPI table, partitioned primary index. Now, create table, our table name. Then we've got our open paren, all of our columns and their data types, close paren. And then we list the primary index. That's still going to be hashed and that's what's going to be used to distribute the rows amongst the amps. But at the end we say partition by open paren, depno, close paren. And what we're really saying is, and this is not that complex, I don't want to make more of this than there is. All we're saying when we do partition by depno, we say lay the rows out by the primary index of employee number, then I want to make sure when you usually sort by the row ID, don't you do that. I want you to sort on each amp by department number and that's a partition table. Remember, each amp is going to sort its rows. There's only two ways, by the row ID or if it's a partition table, by the partition and then the row ID and that is called the row key. Here you can see our nine rows in our table. This was distributed by the primary index of employee number and the rows went to the proper amps. The only difference is each amp sorted the rows not by the row ID but they did it by department number because that was the partitioning statement. Partitioning is designed to eliminate full table scans. Now let's think about this. If we queried this table where the employee number is equal to something, it's a single amp retrieve because that's the primary index. But we partitioned this table by department number, depno column. So if we were to say select everything from the table where department number is equal to 300, now the parsing engine says, ooh, that table has been partitioned by depno. So amps, you'll all be involved. It's an all amp retrieve, but just read your partition three. Don't do a full table scan. That's how partitioning is designed to work.